Welcome to Real Physics. Today I will talk about Benjamin Franklin and Leonard Euler. And this is part of the Great Physicist series. And of course, Franklin and Euler were not exactly physicists, but they had a huge influence on physics. And why I talk about Franklin and Euler is because they are kind of role models for the European and American style of thinking. And you have on the one hand side in Europe the natural philosophy oriented physics and in America the technologically oriented applied physics. And interestingly, I mean Euler and Franklin were almost contemporaries and they were certainly considered the greatest minds of their continent at the respective time. But no one seems to have done such a comparison. And what's interesting for me is because I uh, have this book about the cultural differences in European style and American style physics and I think there was a, a shift of physics that became almost another science if you talk about the beginning of the, and the end of the 20th century. These cultural differences are already visible in the 18th century and for that it's worthwhile to take a look at the respective biographies. Let's start with Benjamin Franklin born in 1706 in Boston. He was the son of a soap and candle maker. People had to earn money and little Benjamin was very smart and uh, but his father sent him to uh, took him out of the Latin school and sent him to a more practical school. He learned the printer's craft and yeah slowly climbed up the economic ladder. He became also famous as a writer and he was also always interested in scientific manners. He tried to found a scholarly society, but all this was focused on practical problems such as animal breeding, uh, crop cultivation, land surveying or fire protection. And after having considerable success in his life here, at the mature age of 42, he turned his attention to purely scientific matters and studied electricity. Electricity was at the time a curious phenomenon and he, well, he scientifically investigated, made experiments and eventually invented the lightning rod, which was of enormous importance at a time where cities were regularly devastated by fires caused by lightning. So he became very famous. People knew him. He was a good communicator and became also a politician. And of course, as you know, uh, Franklin also worked on the Declaration of Independence, signed the Constitution and became a famous statesman in the United States and was very important. He played a decisive role in the War of Independence when he went to Paris in 1783 and negotiated that France would enter the War of Independence at the site of the breakaway colonies, which led eventually to the recognition of the United States. So we have certainly a great mind, an important uh, man. And let's look at Leonard Euler. In contrast, he grew up in a respectively boring city in Basel in Switzerland. His father was a priest and thought uh, little Len Leonhard should study theology, but the boy was interested in math and physics. and enrolled at age 13 at university and came out with a dissertation at age 16 about the works of Descartes and Newton and made a second dissertation about the propagation of sound which was awarded then a prize of the famous French Academy of Sciences in Paris. So well Euler he was a, a wunderkind and became the most arguably the most important mathematician of the 18th century. He developed complex analysis, complex numbers. Let's just uh, remind the famous formula of Euler de Moivre. But he also founded entire fields such as fluid mechanics and was interested in navigation and astronomy, also uh, in practical problems, but always from a fundamental perspective that drove him to abstract considerations often related to math. And 
Well, at the, towards the end of his life, he got into an argument with King Frederick II of Prussia and followed an invitation of Empress Katharina the Great and lived from 1766 to 80, 1783 in Petersburg. He was a big journey back then where he was hosted by the King of Poland. Well, uh, private life was very, very difficult. He had 13 kids. I think only four of them survived him. So think about that, the times and even great the admiration if somebody could arrive at such abstract considerations and being so productive in, in so difficult times. Now, if you ask the question, who was the greater mind? I mean, you can ask Google and interestingly, I mean, Franklin has kind of 40 million hits and Euler just one and a half millions, but that's not a satisfactory answer. I think we uh, should focus on the achievements and the perspective of thinking traditions. And as I said, Franklin and Euler were exemplary for thinking traditions in the United States and in Europe. In America you had practical problems and in Europe Euler considered also always mathematical abstractions. Here was the focus on technology, here we had fundamental questions. All this continued until the 20th century where in Europe people pondered about the fundamental laws of nature and in America they were able to develop huge projects which were unthinkable in Europe also because of too much bureaucracy and so on and so forth. However, we have yeah, a couple of um, notions here. Usefulness on the one hand side, insight uh, and understanding, real understanding of the laws of nature while the practical style tended more just to describe the experiments with numbers. And also this in turn, we're talking about later developments, led to science organized in large communities of big science in America while uh, at the beginning of the, until the, the beginning of the 20th century, individual thinkers were predominant in Europe. So just a few anecdotes to highlight this. Frederick the Great of Prussia he wanted Euler to help him with a fountain in, in his castle Sanssouci and that Euler obviously wasn't up to the task to make a beautiful fountain with water for, king, for the king of Prussia and yeah, the emperor was dissatisfied and I don't doubt that Franklin would have, would have done better in this respect. But uh, there is uh, of course a profound difference in how people approach things. Another example is Benjamin Franklin dealt with uh, geodesy but always from a very practical perspective. I mean who owns the land or who not that helps to avoid uh, struggle and also Carl Friedrich Gauss uh, dealt with geodesy but he for him it was a motivation to delve into that abstract math of curvature and, and so on. So this in turn led to mathematics that was used by Einstein for the general theory of relativity. So if we look at uh, the, the, the pure intelligence genius depth abstraction, it's clear that Euler surpassed Franklin in every respect. He laid the foundations for math, which was important and for quantum mechanics, complex numbers uh, until the 20th century, the, the big insights of physics. On the other hand, if you ask the question, who was more important for humankind? I mean, Franklin was a much broader personality. Besides being a scientist, he was also a politician, a great communicator. And also as a, as a writer, he had a wisdom of, of life that Euler hardly could achieve. So uh, in conclusion, I mean, it's, I think both characteristics represented by Euler and Franklin are needed for the flourishing of a civilization. But it's very interesting that we can identify this different thinking style already back then in the 18th century. And I think a proper consideration and a proper analysis of history, of the history of physics, is necessary if you want to understand the current state. 
If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental questions of physics, subscribe to this channel.